Championship. I'm your host, Nims. I'm here with Walther and Noxious. And uh, we have some weird topics off stage, but uh, welcome to the desk, Walther. How, how was your break? Like, it, was it was like minutes, 20 right? minutes. Uh, 20. I, I, I got a hot <laughs> chocolate. I was sipping it, just, you know, casually talking with, with my friend. And I was like, oh, the match is over. Well, I guess I'll be back here. So. I guess JJ is too good. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, he is from the same team as Noxious. What? Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't translate over. I didn't <laughs> infect him with my skill or lack thereof, and he didn't infect me with his actual skills. Well, he has the okay. player skills, he has the casting skills, so it's all good, man. Like, complexity yeah, I guess, for the win. Uh, we can marry and be an actual complete couple. <laughs> we will not go there. <laughs> All right, guys. The next pair of the players that we have is Legendaren. Uh, legend, wait Legendaren. Darren versus our great player from UK, who actually qualified from the UK qualifier, winning versus solo, and right now is 2-0 in his group. So mm -hmm. I think he's already through. But if he wins this one, he's for sure through, and he's still in a good shape. It's visual. Yeah, yeah for him, it's like the, um, there's a point to just prove that he is a good, a good player, right? So he wants to go 3-0. Yeah, and he seemed pretty confident. I, I saw him walk around earlier, and he was talking to a friend, and they were like, yeah, yeah, I think all you have to do is this and this and this, and you're going to get through, like, no problem. He's like, yeah, sure. Sounds like he's at least... Sounds like a plan. Yeah, I mean, he seems like, you know when you have that adrenaline rush when you're competing, mm -hmm. and you're just riding the wave of uh, the momentum? Yeah. That's exactly what he's feeling right now. Yeah, so he's right. dropping his opponents like hot exactly, potatoes. Exactly, yeah. Dropping, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dropping the potatoes. <laughs> Dro dropping them like hot potatoes. Well, hopefully he will not drop the ball with the last match. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, he's he's facing Legendarian. This is the first match uh, for him on stage, so he will be stressed for sure. But uh, because he is already through, I think he should be less stressed. He just he can just enjoy the match and play for the public. I mean, at this point, like, is he guaranteed to be through? Because I feel like when you're two wins. So Tice, I think Tice is one too. Right. I know that much. The other person in his group was, I think, one too as well. Oh, that that would have that would then. Put, I mean, uh, Tice is in the same situation as RDU when three players have to be one too. The same one. So yeah. if if he wins, let's say if Fusion wins 3-0 wins versus Legendary, it could be a three-way tie. It's possible. With Tice. <laughs> yeah. oh, so no. yeah, exactly. Group. So I kind of hope that Vissel will win here. <laughs> Well, I can certainly hope that. He's the hunter player of the day. I haven't seen pretty much... No hunters. Any hunter today. Yeah. yeah that's mean, true. He has a mage as well, so it's a pretty interesting lineup. Hunter, mage, and... What oh, he's playing for London Conspiracy. That's uh, legendary. Oh, what I'm talking about. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, he is playing for London Conspiracy. Yeah. But he is playing for LC, yeah. I was just surprised, you know. It's an Englishman, you know. Oh, okay. London Conspiracy, right? my first thought will be like, Two dots connecting, you know, and it's like, okay, he plays for, he well, plays right. for London Conspiracy. So, Legend, Legendarian plays for London Conspiracy, and we did cast Legendarian before. He won Affinity. So, Lothar, what do you think about him? Well, I know him from the first stages of better game. Like, I still remember the the open tournaments we played, like the mana grinds, the, the Swiss oh tournaments we had on Priders. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was like... A lot of tournaments going uh, back then, and uh, Legendary was one of my most common enemies that I remember from that time. Uh, and he was a pretty decent player, but, player, but uh, like during that that uh, kind uh, that that um, time, I guess. Yeah, I just didn't want to use the that era. Word. The era. That the era. era. That era. Yeah. That was era, Stone Age so. of Hearthstone. Yeah, exactly. So I'm really I'm really happy to see him still playing and doing well. Right. Yep. And he did qualify for European Championships. Uh, for BlizzCon the, fir the first year. He didn't make it to BlizzCon, he got eliminated, but he went really far. So it was it was great to see him come back this year at Gfinity, which he actually won. So uh, Legendary, a, a really good player, but then Visual, he's proving himself. He's uh, on a roll, as you guys said, and uh, it will be an interesting matchup. Yeah, there, was a, there was an interview, right, in the, the, the entrance, uh, the intro videos of the, the entire day, where we saw him talk about how he kind of came in with no expectations. Yeah. You know, he knew the field was going to be stacked, and he didn't expect necessarily to beat Sotol in the first place. But then as soon as he did, he realized, hey, I'm actually in this top 16. I can maybe do this. And at 2-0, the fact that he's already through means he's already top 8, which mm -hmm. means he's already further than he even thought he could. So at this point, I think he's got everything to win. But um, he would like to advance from the first place, right? Because then yeah. you're being paired against a, uh, a player from other group that has, have, uh, that has second place. 
and that in theory gives you the weaker opponent. The seating is a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah the seating is kind of should be probably better, right? Oh wow, this a, this opening for legendary. Yeah, it it, looks this like opening is legendary, and this is an aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> this is an aggressive druid. Noxious, please stay with us. I said nothing. You did. I know, right? So. I mean, this is the first aggro druid we've seen today. All the ones we've seen... I say aggro because I see druid the saber. Yeah. It's an assumption that I make. It's a very uh, correct assumption. I, I, if, if we see Fel Reaver as the next draw, I would not be surprised. Yeah. That sounds like a good uh, prophecy. But then we will get a Hunter's Mark, and this will all go to hell. Let's see if he gets it. It looks it's like it's an aggro oh. hunter as well. Which of these two out? Uh, it feels like to me like the hunter gets out aggroed by druids, especially with the fell reaver. Exactly, just because they have no good answer, the fell reaver. Yeah, the problem is that. Uh, well, the problem is that it does like a um, go to opening hand for for Visu, I think. Both right. players have good openings, actually. This this matchup this matchup is actually pretty good for Druid, I feel, and especially because of that Darnus's aspirant. When there was no no Darnus's aspirant, you couldn't stop the early aggression. You really had to do something with the shape shift, wrath. And if if you go with wild growth, you gain the mana crystal, but you can't really respond to what Hunter is doing. And right now with the minion, you not only get the mana crystal, you kind of force Hunter to to kill it. Because you do ramp the same way, and you have a minion that's that's good with trading. Yeah, it's trading like two for one maybe with their minions, so they don't want to leave it up. Uh, at the same time, the fact that he had to use the uh, the coin to get it out means that he's not really going to put out anything super threatening, right? Unless he plays more to the Raptors. Right, which is well, it's pretty common nowadays in the aggro druid, but very often, and I don't know what Vissol knows about Legendarian's deck. Maybe he thinks it's a typical mid-range. And so on three, he expects at most a shade, and he's not too worried about it. Mm -hmm. By the way, the double owl opening hand is really unfortunate for him, especially in this kind of situation when you can't really yeah. um, silence. silence the, yeah. the dance aspirant, right? Even if you would like to, to play it, you would have to silence your own minion. Yeah, just to get a two-on on the board. Yeah. Uh, so usually, I think this is a case of hero power and maximize your... Uh, your damage output, and I hope that you can raise him somehow. Yeah. Although this is a decent card, is it? For to pick because up. you have no way of killing both at the same time. Keeper and the Grove could punish you. So this looks kind of awkward. Yeah, I mean, maybe just maximizing your damage output and getting the best explosive trap you can. Is going to be good enough? Like, let's assume the Aspirant number two, the one that's a 2-3 right now, is used to pop the, the Spider. Then suddenly, you have two kills with Explosive Trap. So that's maybe huh. good enough. It's a really tough turn. Well, really tough turn. You do have to kill one for sure. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I feel like maximizing damage output and setting up for Explosive is good enough. He's bluffing here also on the Snake Trap, right? This snake trap, bait, bear trap. Because if, if Legendary doesn't have like full information on the deck, he might be wondering why would I, why, why would he play the the trap on turn three, right? In this kind of situation. Oh man, that's a really risky play. Is that what it takes to win though? Because I feel like with, dub with double charge, owl, he's still the super charge minion to the face. Yeah, that's right. He's still super behind with double owls. Like that, double no owls not doing right. anything. Right. It's useful when you're about to use, uh, you know, stuff like Arcane Golems. He even runs those, or Horse Riders, just to get, you know, some of the taunts out of the way. But in a position like this, the the owls are just useless. I think, like as a druid, you can safely just attack with two one to face because if you it, know it's not freezing in the first place. If, if that's yeah, if that's freezing, two one goes back to hand and you're fine. If that's a bird trap, you're still more or less fine because you can play, you can just charge with the with four four or whatever, just play it as a taunt. And if it's Explosive Shop, you do lose that one mana crystal, but you can still play something like Shredder, so you're in a good, good spot. Savage Combatant is nice as well. It's not even contested here. But with the Owl, I think uh, it will be, right? Now he has a decent Owl target. Yeah, now yeah. he does pick up, finally, an Owl target that he's happy to, to use it on. He might actually go for Juggler Attack with the 1 to into the 5. Yeah, the four. Juggler and Attack is With a like quick the shot, possibly, is even better. It depends on the jugglers, right? If you if you nail a juggle on the savage combatant, then you use the the yeah. uh, the quick shot. If you don't do it, it 
then you'll just play Owl and uh, silence the, uh, the combatant. What about going with the quickshot first anyway? Because then you, you sh you're sure that you kill the combatant. The five, four, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like giving him, leaving him with a two on, is that really that big of a deal? It is because you want to protect that juggler, so... You probably, yeah, probably quick shoot first, then attack, and then you have really good chance to kill the two on. No, but, yeah, I mean, it's the same chances in the end. The only thing is, what do I leave, leave up if it messes up? Well, you can... The only difference is, what do I leave alive if it, it, it doesn't hit? Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Well, I can see the silence. Now you have to silence. You have no choice, because otherwise, the hero power alone kills your juggler, and that is game. So wasn't it better to actually attack into combatants? Hmm. That's really interesting that he, he doesn't want to silence this because, as you said, the hero power has really high value now. It is damage, though. So if you attack with the hero power into Jaguar... That's three, you're dealing. And you're That's using right. the hero power instead of playing uh, Shredder or whatever. Yeah, playing stuff. Yeah. But you have a Druid of the Saber and Knife Juggler to curve it out. I definitely see that happening. Yeah, I think at this point Vesul is basically saying I'm going all in no matter what happens here, and he's not wrong. Yeah, see, this is definitely a card he's happy to see here. You silence off that uh, juggler, then you Arden horse rider. Do you just keep pushing face? No, and use then that you quick use hero power. No, 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 you just use hero power here. You just Arden horse rider kill the knife juggler, deal two damage to the face, hero power. Your opponent is at 15. Yeah. You have three minions on board. Your opponent, your opponent yeah, has to still, if, uh, if he uses the hero power, it doesn't, he, you, doesn't, you, you don't care if it's three damage or, or, or one, one because yeah. it will be used to clear the minions. And uh, that had the... That was important lesson to silence the, the, the Savage Combatant just to protect have the, the juggler. The protect the juggler, but that's not the case anymore. You might so you want to just maximize the damage each turn with the hero power. Would you... Yeah. You might actually kill the juggler with the 1-1s. One with the 1-1s one instead, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about whether or not you want to use the... I don't think so, because there was an option to play a swipe during the game. He didn't. And he didn't. So uh, having more targets is actually more beneficial for, for Visu, because he is always having the bigger damage output. And even if there will be a swipe, uh, then having one minion doesn't necessarily help you here, because you're lose, losing damage anyway. Yeah, well, speaking of that, oh, right Raptor. now, he finds a way to curve out. But he's still taking damage where he doesn't want to. Well, the Druid of the Saber wasn't that well, bad either. The 3-2 so is dealt, yeah. You can, you can it wasn't that important. He would have been much more happy with uh, Living Roots, an example. Than Monte Living Raptor. Roots would have been a lot more useful. I would say that he might go he might go just for the Druid of the, the Clone. Of, yeah, Clone. yeah, right, in Taunt mode right here. Because yeah. you can usually protect it unless something goes awfully wrong. And in this case, this is probably the only case where the Owls are actually doing more job yeah. than any other card that Vissel could have. Because they will push for a lot of damage. Yeah. Six damage from um, board and hero power. You have access to three more on your hand, but you will wait for that. So what I, about... I wouldn't be surprised if you would just play double hours. To get turn. the minions on the board. To, to get the minions on the board, there was no swipe. You will see that right now. Okay, that, is he just pushing for face? Yeah, it makes sense. It's it, this kind of druid. Like, there's so much damage. I was but thinking if you can just hero power and play Vissoula maybe... Vissoula can't... Just can't uh, stop. He, stop, he, right. stop hitting face. You gotta, you gotta keep pushing in a position like this because you've already yes. committed. You can draw even with your quick shot starting next turn. So you play an owl to silence off that combatant, and yes. now you push with hero power. Exactly. So now you savage, uh, you silence savage combatant because you need minions on board. You, you saw there's no swipe because the swipe would have been played that turn, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. you push as many minions on board as possible, you deal the damage that you can, and hope there's no savage roar. Well, you probably keep the second owl, right? Like, you, if, if there's Surely, rid of yeah. the claw, so you want to have the second silence, but you absolutely silence the third. Uh, it makes sense, yeah. Uh, if you start trading, you will be behind because you have to spend resources. Oh, he's trading. Is he? He might push. He might, he might still go for face. Oh, I don't like that. Da -na 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 -na. I really don't like L that. Lothar dislikes trades. <laughs> Never I just trade. like the trades. Just auto in this situation, you don't have enough damage output to kill him next turn, most likely. You have four, six, eight. Well, 11 with but if every single minion on board survives, right? Well, you survive a race, right? I think it's not terrible that he Because Because Sav Savage War killed you, just alone. And this board is super, super weak to swipe still. So. Yeah, Savage War alone was lethal. So I think just because of that Savage War, 
I don't like it anyway. <laughs> but I mean, I he mean, could have silenced the the, the five four, and then suddenly Savage Roar only adds uh, six damage, and the Druid is one off lethal. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's by your time. So if he silenced the uh, the five four, he would have been like one damage off dying. It's so amazing that there is still no swipe, and those small minions are doing so much work. And the only option to have lethal that turn was Living Roots, which you know that he doesn't have. Yeah. Because there, there were so many situations when Living Roots would have been perfect. Like the, uh, an example, 10-5, right? Yeah, when he could have just played that and, and uh, yeah. curved differently instead. Well, Savage Shore and Druid of the Saber was lethal, right? <laughs> you know what? When you see Legendary trading here, you're, you have to be thinking, well, I think I've got the edge as far as damage output goes. And that's 4, 7, 9, that's exactly 11. That is cool. insane! <laughs> Arcane Golem for the win. Well, this is the face hunter after all, right? It does, <laughs> it does go face. And you do go face. So here. even though he lost the damage, he still had what he took. But that was the exactly four that he needed by losing the abuse of certain attack. Right. So he got it back, and that was the only card that actually gave him that. Because well, kill, kill, kill command, possibly. Kill command. What? what? Huffer is four damage as well. But that's 33 percent from a animal yeah. companion when you don't necessarily might even play like two animal companions in that yeah. deck. Kill command was too expensive to get immediately. Yeah. Because uh, you, I mean, unless you went owl quick shot, you cycle into kill command, but you couldn't play the card you just got. So it was actually really impressive because his hand was really bad from the start. He explodes the trap with the double owl. Yeah. It seemed hopeless. Well, we'll see whether or not he's able to take it against a rogue. It feels like the aggression he can put together should be good. It is an amazing especially matchup the for a hunter. Right, uh, sorry, exactly. the, especially the weapons. Right. Uh, the eagle humble is a, an MVP against uh, Rogue in general because it deals so much damage and if it doesn't deal damage to the face then it deals uh, with forces and agents which are the minions that will probably be played as soon as possible especially if the Rogue is on a coin which is not the case here but in general what you want to have in your opening hand is the Eagle Horn Bow. Yeah. One of the things to, to keep in mind as well is that the teacher is weak to that eagle horn bow plus an explosive trap, which happens, it's a scenario that comes up quite often. Yeah, on the other hand, we also don't exactly know what rogue version is uh, Legendary playing. So we've seen JJ was playing Forest Fusion Virtue, yeah. which is really good. Sometimes people play Healbot as well. We don't know how much heal uh, Legendary is actually backing here. And overall, this matchup is great for Face Hunter. It should be, because there's too little healing. Uh, normally, no, but... Almost no taunts as well. Right, exactly. Unless they're playing a weird version of it. This is a tricky situation. You can play with two options. One is, of course, Vogan Infiltrator into Snake Trap, but that's very risky because you know that the opponent is playing double Fan of Knives on his deck and uh, will allow to, for a easy clear after taking free damage from the Snake Trap, which is kind of okay because it, you, deal, you dealt free damage from it. Yeah. The other option is to fake um, Bear Trap. And then play, play one, yeah. And then play juggler, which will of course mean that he, he has a snake trap there, and that is that, that is very weak to um, back steps. So I favor the Vogan infiltrator into snake trap, even yeah. though there might be a fan of knives. I really don't like the like. I don't mind that bluffing the trap or trying to get him to trigger snake, but rogue has to be the worst class to do that against. Yeah, as I said, his back steps yeah. and stuff. Like he will not have to attack. So yeah, good decisions with the Infiltrator there. Double Unleash the Hounds. It's not great now, but as you mentioned, Violet Teacher, it might be good later. Yeah, there's a few spots with, like as a Hunter, where you can abuse the Violet Teacher. Uh, like when the Rogue overextends with it, and sometimes they don't have the choice. But you can punish them for that. So do you just go with the Juggler? Or How do you go with the Snake Trap first? Hero Power be when you go juggler coin snake not very good if you play snake now you're usually safe yeah he's but going for the juggler apparently oh man gonna dodge that si with the backstab well sometimes you take those risks yeah you, ha you have to take them sometimes <laughs> that's an si hello well that's uh, pretty much exactly what legendary wanted there's yeah. no better card in this deck for this exact situation. Well, you can Backstab and Farseer as well, but it doesn't. Like, Weapon Attack and Farseer, but it's probably better anyway. Yeah, you keep the Weapon Charges. You, oh, I think that the only question is, do you think that Overkill will matter? Hmm. Uh, Mad Scientist with Snake Trap looks pretty good. I was really surprised, but I didn't have Juggler, to be honest. Yeah, I thought it was uh, the middle-of-the-road play that didn't commit to... 
like, that was the scenario that anyway, yeah. yeah that was the scenario when you lose board control to an easy combination of cards <laughs> even a, a single backstab was a problem because you don't gain anything uh, were by attacking to the Vorg and you give him the board no matter what. Yes, exactly. It was mostly backstab because with SI7 you will have to have an activator. You will have to it have. Matter, I mean, yeah, even it Eviscerate it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Eviscerate knife juggler attack into the Vorg yeah, and infiltrator. Yeah, yeah. Any any answer was a problem. But the thing is, it was still a problem if you played next turn, like on turn three, because it still dies to the same cards. Yeah, but if Snake Track triggers instead of the juggler dying, then you're forcing Phantom Knife. But it might never trigger it's because of the backstabs to say sevens and. Yeah, well, but with, with with a dagger up, the rogue would have attacked into Worgen, right? Oh yeah. So yeah. that 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 was the only line of play that we thought. Uh, it wasn't fun. really uh, damage. Damage efficient. Right. Exactly. And that's what you have to be when you're playing against rogue. You want to play as many hero powers as possible in general. And yeah, that's it. And he did it, coin that snake trap again. Honestly, this is this is pretty good though. Uh, this position here for Visul doesn't look like much, but that explosive trap weakens the minions down to one health, and, and that's then you just have unleashed enough. House. And imagine if you would have still the unleashed, uh, sorry, the Nav Juggler in hand. Yeah, that would be a nasty turn. So now you just have to hero power and snake trap this turn. I turned. like that, like that a lot. Otherwise, you're getting just wrecked by those three, th those two minions. Yeah. You can't play anything else. Arkin Golem is a great finisher, but you can't play it mid-game just to, to get the all rogue what he needs to get the early combo. Right? It's, so. it's much too early for that. Yeah, yeah but still, uh, this turn is not in a bad position. Just being six damage right Double now, unleash this turn is actually pretty sick. How do you deal with Azure, though? Doctor, boom. Hmm. Knife juggler from the top. Eh, that's not bad either. I'll take that. I mean, animal companion plus uh, the hounds. So you double unleash. Oh, if you get the Leoc, well, it's interesting. That's. Uh, but you have to clear Azure Drake. Yeah, you have to clear oh, Azure Drake. No, absolutely. But then if, the snake trap will be so much better. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that will be clear. <laughs> I mean, uh, fan of knives, two blade flurries. There are four cards that are clearing the board. So that's, that's not a problem for Legendary to take, take the, the game for itself here. Yeah. Like, take the tempo back to switch um, the, the, the positioning on the board. Yeah, he, he has to hope that his stuff lives, but he's, he's not expecting it to, to do so. You have to kill the Drake no matter what, though. You can't let that be. This is Spell really damage is too much. Just a single flurry. single flurry takes the whole board away, and you can't risk that. Even though you're playing Face Hunter, you can't risk that, but you know that you have more <coughs> consistent damage, but less explosive than Rogue. So if you can just kind of curve out here, that allows you to, to uh, just dish out more damage in general. Yeah, just pace your damage a little bit more. Because the thing is, you're not going to win a race if you're not killing the Drake. What secret are you expecting? You're expecting Snake Chop, uh, because you did attack Face. There was Explosive Chop, no freezing, so it has to be Snake Chop. Oh, the Belcher. Oh, wow, the Belcher will be a huge pain. Unless uh, he gets for, an out. For Vistula to go through. He and is playing double Iron Beak. The Flurry will do quite a bit of work, but that's kind of what uh, Vistula expected anyway. But that means he's got something of an open field to play with. This is why I like to. He has an open board, he can play any minion. Yeah, play anything he wants, right? That's the dream. Until it's not. Hero power turn. Yeah, he got that Iron Beak for the Belcher. Yeah, and when you're when you're able to put the Rogue in a position where they have to, well, there could be if if Legendary had the proper cards, the lethal is not that far off, and I would turn on the aggressive gears, but not with a hand like this. Well, I think this is Doctor Boom actually, because Hunter will not take you down uh, from. Yeah, I mean you have to. Well, you're happy to do it actually. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it's too it's too good to pass. And you put uh, you put Hunter at twelve, and you still have a Viscerate in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's only bad against what? Is there even a thing it's bad against? So unleash Arcane Golem. How much damage is that? You've Not seen one unleash already. Yeah, no, there's there's no way that that's gonna be enough. Yeah, there's just not enough mana. Unleash Q command hero power, or like unleash Q command quick shot. It's still not enough. Yeah, not even with the mana you have. So. 
Good yeah. choice by a legendary to play Dr. Boom. That's definitely true. Yeah, there's really no alternative, unfortunately. Well, that I mean, was the I, best I, card, but you can get super defensive and go Belcher, whatever. I guess you, he could have gone for something very slow, like Belcher. Yeah. Oh, would, would have been, been a worse play. Yeah. And now Visual is in a, in a really bad position. He just needs to protect himself somehow, but he can't kill Dr. Boom. And that alone, the fact that Dr. Boom doesn't die, that's enough to be a problem. Well, that's it, because you can always sub something, then eviscerate for four, and yeah. then deal the fifth damage with the weapon. Yeah, least it's pretty much guaranteed. We still have one boom bot that can hit face. And that prep sprint last turn. Yeah, that was a That huge. prep sprint was huge. Imagine Hunter's Mark. Oh, this would oh. be so insane. Uh, that's it. That's a 1-1 one, one tie for Legendary vs. Visol. Face Hunter got killed. Again, Rogue is doing good work. And we'll see if Rogue is actually sweeping the series. Rogue is doing God's work. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Killing a hunter. And I think that that was the worst matchup for the Rogue. It There's Mage and Rogue. Uh, sorry, and Warlock from Visol. It's, yeah, it will depend on what Visol is playing. Uh, then again, we saw the Face Hunter, so maybe he's playing a very aggressive lineup. And a lot of players that maybe don't have the exposure yet often tend to play aggressive decks. We were talking about that yeah, earlier, right? Yeah, we mentioned that. So. Especially if, uh, if he's not playing that much Hearthstone. And, yeah. and he's here for fun. Like he, he didn't have that many expectations. But he is playing those with those decks correctly. And uh, I haven't seen any mistakes from him so far. So we, we had some different line of lines of play. Like Lothar was disagreeing at some point. But yeah, with the last game, I think. Well, like a, a matter of uh, two damage on one turn instead of the other. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you mean not against the Druids? Yeah, yeah, it was another. But game I would though. have played the, the the game against Rogue way different too. Well, that knife the juggler, juggler opener, yeah, agreed. That was a. Uh, I think that's something that's really risky might pay off. But in general, from my experience against Rogue, you can't really. <laughs> I mean, you might as well that. have coined the juggler on turn one. Yeah, that yeah, point, exactly. If you're gonna go for that play, for sure. Exactly, that's for, that's for sure. So legendary with the backstab and the SI on the coin with it. I mean, with the curve. Is, yeah, Against Handlock, that's pretty good. And uh, what do we have? What What is this Warlock? Is this Malagos? We again? saw Molten Giant, so it could be Reno, could be Hand. I mean, standard Handlock, right? Oh, looks like yeah, uh, a more standard, standard. old-fashioned good well, Handlock. Could it be Reno Lock with Mountain? I think so. Uh, no, I'm asking. I, I'm not. I don't think so. I, I saw some I'm, people playing that. Yeah, I have. I have too, but. I don't believe that's uh, possible. <laughs> well, okay, maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, he is getting a giant on curve. Well, Demon Wrath tells us this might be Reno. I mean, I I want to say it's Reno because of Demon Wrath, but I guess there might be an argument to be made for including it somewhere else. I just and the Demon Hand. Look. Yeah, maybe they, he combined all uh, the decks together. <laughs> this is an Whoa. ultimate combination. Maybe he has 60 cards in his deck. It's the Dragon Ball Z. Handlock. Everybody just plays Fusion. It's like, what should I play? He basically asks people, should I play Handlock? <laughs> Even lock? They have so many archetypes, and, dude. Play everything. Yeah. And uh, two all together. <laughs> yeah, where's, the, where's my Voidwalker? That would be some eggs in there too. And PO. Next, I was, I next turn he's corruption. just going, yeah, just just draw Ark and Golem next turn. <laughs> Yeah. Like playing the combo and all of nowhere comes faceless. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a question of a legendary. Does I kill? Do I kill the mountain giant or do I just sap him? The problem with the sap is that you want to keep that for the taunted minions up. Yeah. But if you lose eviscerate at the state of the game, it kind of makes it more difficult to finish up after mountain giants. I mean, if you sap now, you you do get uh, a decent follow up on five to kill the mountain. But it's going to be easier to kill it, but the thing is, you are wasting a sap, which is very yeah. precious. Usually, you want. And to he kill still the doesn't person. know what type of deck he's facing. Yeah, no yeah. idea. Well, he's assuming headlock right now, yeah. like we kind of did when we started. I like the kill uh, because you normally you want to kill the first giant, and he has those saps, so he is getting a, a, a really good board. I'm using that violet teacher here. Even though he's taking eight damage, it doesn't matter. It's fine because it's too he has early to matter that yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. And he built up kind of quite quite a board. Yeah. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Explosion? Huh. They said I could be anything, so I became <laughs> anything. <laughs> um, I mean, Implosion with Demon Wrath follow-up, it's pretty sweet if you hit for three. I kind of like that, but it's like Phantom Knives, because you're baiting out the Phantom Knives immediately. Uh, well, he might be baited by low tap, but the low tap <laughs> dies to two minions. The two minions, right, exactly. And, and the attack from the hero, and that's that doesn't something you don't want to do at all. So it seems like Implosion is the best bet. But if you hit for two, that's not going to work well. Tap Farseer, but that he seems awkward with the weapon. Oh, already, he so. goes with the low tap. I don't like that at all. It pushes for more minions when you don't have a way of clearing those minions. What are you talking about? He has it. It's Demon Wrath. Damn, son. You don't believe in the Dark Bomb top deck? Dark you don't believe in much, little dark. Oh. Second Eviscerate. That's actually a huge deal. Yeah, this is an amazing situation, especially because the Azurjake will be on board for the time being. So, of course, Legendary plays around Shadow Flame. Well, that was the best clear possible. And you're really not afraid of taking damage. I mean, honestly, with the uh, Farseer, the heal bot, the Demon Wrath, I think he's able to at least stall until he's able to go turn seven with the Implosion Demon Wrath. But like, what if you Farseer here, right? Like, you Farseer, and then you, I don't know, you tap. I don't, I don't really mind. But what this does is you're able to guarantee that one of the minions will attack into it, hopefully. And based on that alone, you're weakening them enough that Implosion and Demon Wrath should take care of them. Well, the problem is there are two saps waiting. So whatever you play on board, if it's not Implosion, it gets sapped. Hubot! Well, he doesn't know there are two awesome. saps, right? I mean, yeah, Fat of Knives is a problem. If you play Flurry. Healbot, then you tell, tell to your opponents, I don't have Molten Giants. Yeah. Well, Why do you say I expect to take 25 next turn? Well, the biggest minion is Twilight Drake. And yeah, that's weak to sap a lot more than everything else. I'd play Farseer before I play Twilight. So Farseer and what? Farseer and even BGH, just because. It's not bad, actually. Ooh, he goes for the greedy play and he will be punished. Yes, he helps there's no Savannas. I mean, no sap, but there is. Oh my god. Goodness, this keeps getting worse and worse for Visul. Unless the Invisible Clap will be played first. <laughs> oh no. Just, oh, Edwin, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to work. It says win in the name. And then he goes like with into SI7 because he just activated <laughs> Damage is Savannah, so oh, like, oh no, what did I do? <laughs> All right, sap into Edwin is pretty good. It does shine yellow. Guys, we just need a very good AoE here. We, we need just a second need... Demon Wrath. We need Hellfire. He goes for it. Hellfire into Demon Wrath. Or we need Healbot to stall Owl down that Edwin. So if he goes, but that's explosion. Demon Eleven Wrath. damage on board. Yeah, and then there is Eviscerate for five. That's uh, kind of too much. So you Demon Wrath and Implosion, one of them? You could play both, honestly. I mean, you can kill the Drake for sure. You can go, like, Implosion on the Drake, Demon Wrath, you'll kill the Drake. There's going to be seven on board, you're on 11. Well, well of if you kill the Azure Drake with the Implosion, then you just play Farseer. If you hit properly, but you're no, I mean, you're still leaving two, two more damage on board. Yeah, I guess that might be what he wants to do. I just feel like you can also silence Edwin. Well, that, yeah, I mean, to me, the play was Owl and Healbot, but uh, Owl Healbot is 11. Because I mean, the thing is, you want to get as far away from the death as possible and maybe set up some kind of taunt with Defender or get a Demon Wrath turn. And now is not quite when you're going to be able to do it. Yeah, is, is he dead though? There is 5, 7, 8, 11, plus 5, plus 16. 2. Uh, he is dead. Yeah, Sap of his rate SI is lethal. I think. Is it 18? I think he's 1 off actually. No, he can attack. You Sap SI, everything goes face, you eviscerate, I think you win. Go 6, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, he's got. Oh, yeah, you're right, he's 1 off. Yeah. That's amazing. And he got. He doesn't have. He's one mana off as well, right? Yeah. To kill it. The dagger. Five, seven. No, no, no. So he will not be able to dagger anyway. Would have to be next turn. Oh, still great shape. You just in a heal bot, no molten giants. He can still do whatever he wants. But now, if he. If, uh, is, he is he afraid of committing damage? Why would he? Because be? of the molten. But he was not playing our, again, uh, 
around mountains. I am telling before. right. I, I I'm just telling you what I see. <laughs> I, I'm not saying I agree with what I'm seeing, Lothar. Okay. I'm asking the question. I, I, <laughs> That was a good question. It's the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> what color should I pick for my jeans? Yes. So based on what we have seen before, I assume that this will be the turn with Sylvanas and Sunkeeper. Sunkeeper protector. I absolutely hope not. But to be consistent with his previous plays, yes. Yeah, and he's so one sap. Yeah. So yeah, you go for Sylvanas because there is no way there is a second sap. But wait, there is one. Of course, there's one. There always is, right? This uh, is a really bad spot. It, it's tough. Like, what? I feel like he didn't really have much of a choice, though, to navigate this game. Everything's kind of oh, lining up against Galanke, him. Yeah. All, yeah, all game long. Uh, well, Legendary played really well as well, just killing the first giant, having a board that just kept pushing and sapping those big minions. Yeah, and this sap right here is the sap that he didn't expend on the giant. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think he needed it in this case, just based on the hand that he had but it really gives him a lot more leeway. So another class bites the dust, and Rogue has two wins. Looks like Rogue is absolutely demolishing everybody here. And Visor is left with his Temple Mage. Do you, are you sure it's Temple Mage? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. I'm sure because he won against Tice, game two <laughs> and, and game got... three, oh, with yeah. double mana firms on turn one. I, he told me he died by turn five twice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the, to the same scenario, double <laughs> mana firms on turn one, into, you know, the, the usual. Yeah, the usual. Flame cannon, frostbolts, that kind of stuff. Such a good mage player. Oh, look at that. There's a man of him. Well, it's just the beginning, Lothar. But Legendar has a backstep and agent. And coin again. What? Yep. All right. Looks like a good start. So you mulligan. You probably just throw away as Dragon, Dr. Boom. Just keep backstab SI. And here you throw out a counter spell for sure. You might actually keep frostbolt. It depends what... Legendary knows about the deck, right? Like, I don't know. I assume he asked around yeah. what uh, his opponent was playing. Scouting is actually a really important part of tournaments for card Yeah. Game. You want to have that information. Because the mulligan is almost one of the most important parts of your game. Yeah. Uh, there is Flame Waker as well for Visual, which is not bad. But for Frostbolt, there might be no targets. To be honest, I think like Legendary already has the answers in his hand. Oh. Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry. Yeah, that's already enough to wipe the board. Double Mana Worm opener for Visul. Maybe not on the coin, but still the double Mana Worm. I think he's, yeah. uh, he's cheating. <laughs> Somehow, he found a way to always have two Mana Worms in his opening hand. Yeah. Well, yeah, it happens. The They're not even ah, that's a good one. All right, so um, what do you do here? You can you can just backstab and kill one. I might just wait next turn. Do you? I was actually thinking about just coining out the deadly poison just oh, to kill man. one as soon as Look possible. Look at that frostbolt, man. Do you just frostbolt and arcane missiles and just go face? No, I don't go arcane missiles, but just I just frostbolt. frostbolt. Just frostbolt because turn three looks amazing with the uh, with the flame waker. This is like five damage right here. You buff worms. But you will have the same outcome with have the Flame Waker. Yeah, you will have more with Flame Waker next turn as well. Oh so my god. Rest in peace. Well, it, it's not yeah, rest that bad. No, it's pretty I don't like that at all, to be honest. It's pretty awful. You saw a Rogue dagger up and not attack. Do you think there's, there's no flurry in your future? What do you think? Like, <laughs> this is a really terrible hand. This is over for the mage. It Unless is, yeah. Water Elemental is top decked and sticks 17 times. <laughs> like after being sapped and sapped and sapped. You're right, you're right. Well, yeah, this is the best that the poison play possible. This is... I, I thought that Legendarian sent him a fax saying, I'm keeping my dagger because I have a flurry. Now yeah. you remove. Yeah. And Vissel didn't receive the fax because the technology is outdated and it's not there yet. But I thought it was pretty clear. <laughs> I, I like that Frostbolt, that's for sure. And that's not usually how we cast, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was, uh... I mean, usually you just go for the value when it comes to tempo, right? Yeah. And the, the value, I mean, by the value, I mean the fact that you use your Flame Waker when conjunction with spells right. to dish out the, the natural spell damage potential from it, right? And it's it seems pretty awesome to play Flame Waker with Arc and Misses on 24 when you and when you guarantee yourself that your both mana worms will live yeah. for turn three 
with an additional spell, because the only option to clear those mana worms is a blade flurry when your opponent is frozen. So right? it's a coin. It's literally deadly poison, flurry, flurry pass. pass yeah. And you killed two mana worms, but you were dealt a lot of damage, and you lo lost the potential to wipe out the board later on. And then you just play the Flame Waker, and you didn't even have the Alchemist misses at that point. You, just, you can just play it and we'll play whatever. Well, maybe the Unstable Portal will find the Black Knight. Oh my god. That would be pretty awesome with a free mana Black Knight. That's Not a, quite it. But it fits the playstyle. It does, most definitely. Uh, it's still an awkward spot, though. After losing those, those minions. Oh, let's I not mean, kill ourselves. This is awful. <laughs> this is you, like you do have Dr. Boom for seven. So on six, technically, uh, there could be a decent play. I mean, at this point, what he, what he has to do is basically Frostbolt's trade, see what he finds. Uh, if he picks up the Time Rewinder with Arcane Golem, that's eight damage. Oh, that's a good point. So, I actually didn't think about it. Yeah, like, there's a few spare parts that can really improve his spot, but it's going to be a long ways away. The problem is he wasn't aggressive. That's oh, the yeah, problem. I guess... Uh, Imagine if the Frostbolt would actually, would actually deal damage to the face. That was five damage for two mana. Yeah, instead of playing Flame Waker. Like he really, he really hoped there was no flurry. He hoped there is no way to deal with the the board. If stuff. if the rogue, as Noxious said, didn't attack, that means he has to get at least a deadly poison, and he's just uh, leaving Waiting. it for ten free, so it can coin out deadly poison alongside agent. Yeah, yeah. Or the other option is blade flurry. Otherwise, you would always attack into one one man, uh, one attack mana worm I just to set up a good uh, agent for the future. This goes to show that in like sometimes. It's about telling, I mean, reading into what your opponent's telling you. It's yeah. not necessarily about playing your cards. It's about, you know, why did he do what he did? Uh, it's kind of like the second degree. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of pros have this habit already. It's yeah. kind of ingrained in them. And just, what is this play indicating? As opposed to uh, maybe just playing your cards. Well, this shows that uh, Visual is it's his first big tournament, right? It is. And also, he is probably already through. So he didn't see that one. And he's doing his best at the moment. We'll see. You got a stat swap. Yeah, the stat swap is not uh, the most impactful one, but it can do some work in very fringe cases. Yeah, this guy's so Dr. Boom is usable next It, it will be a really one-sided game after that play. Flame strike top deck. Uh, it's, uh, there is a fireball, so he can deal with Edwin. He can fireball Arcane, uh, I mean, Arcane Golem, kill the Drake, Ping the slime. He can, can all he, these things in one turn. Can he still like just play boom and hope there is not enough damage to kill him? No, not on this board. Well, I mean, maybe he can. I just that's See, very he's, optimistic. He's right? so far behind that if he starts like fighting back instead of just trying to push, he might just lose anyway. And if you play Doctor Boom, if you're not dead, something has to be done about it. I guess you're right because when you have the Arcan Golem with a fireball, it is well. There we go. So he does play. We're talking like 10 damage directly, and if you pick up, say, another fireball, then that might be the win. Yeah, but there is a lot of them. <laughs> so and the sap, just in case. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I'm just like He's sitting not, he, here he, and he just have watching just this. straight up with flurry and eviscerate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he does. The no. Spell damage will steal this. All right, so that's basically it. 3-0 with the rogue. It's 3-1 overall, but with rogue is. It's great. It looks like Rogue. Every single player that we've seen play today, Freaky, uh, ended up going with the Rogue and going with an opener that was 2-0 and then started losing. But the opener was 2-0. We saw JJ 3-0. Legendary yeah. with a 3-0 on Rogue after getting you know lo losing one match, uh, one game. So I feel like the Rogue was definitely the class to bring. Yeah, it is the MVP class uh, for the tournament, it seems. So uh, I wonder, we probably see tomorrow some Rogue versus Rogue matches. Those will be intense. Yeah. I guess we haven't seen any Rogue and Rogue yet. No, not quite. I still remember the times when Rogue versus Rogue was my free fourth of the latter time, so... <laughs> yeah. Greetings, I will be your death! Now, do I attack ching, with the... Ching, ching, do ching. I attack with the dagger in turn two? Right, is that... <laughs> <laughs> and what about my question. shiv? What do I do with shiv? Like, when do I play <laughs> shiv? Do I shiv phase? Do I find of knives nothing? Like, all these decisions to make. It yeah, can yeah. still happen with Paladin being super popular. But then on ladder you have a lot of hunters, and you don't want to face hunters that yeah, much as well. Even true. though Legendarian was actually able to win versus Hunter. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, the Hunter was uh, sorry. Yeah, the Rogue was doing great, but at the same time, I felt like Visol didn't use his potential, and uh, the Mage. I thought 
had a decent chance of, of beating the rogue. Like, yeah. there's not, not enough heal to sustain the damage. And if two mana, five damage from Frostbolt, one mana, Arcan Missiles, five damage, that's already On turn four. And then, right? like, if you can top deck your way to this, uh, like, afterwards, yeah. just getting that extra bit of damage initially gives you a good reason to start pushing everything. And then it's just a matter of... And it also uh, made uh, Legend Darren be defensive. All Instead of long. taking advantage of having minions on board. Because if... Let's just rewind to the situation, turn two, when the Frozen wasn't, uh, wasn't, paid, uh, wasn't played, right? And uh, if there would be a Frostbolt, Legendary was pushed to, use, to do the same turn, for, um, Deadly Poison into the Blade Flurry, but then you have the, still the, the, the defense, Flame sorry, Waker. the, the, um, the initiative to play Flame Waker. You can play the Arcan Missiles, you don't have to, but you have still the minion on board, then Legendary would have to answer with the backstep agent. But if you have the, the Arcan Missiles, then you have a way of making you combat. Kept it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? And you actually probably win with that Fireball draw in the very At end. At the end, exactly. It's that possible. Last, that I last mean, Fireball was a lot of damage. And if you already played Dr. Boom without being too threatened, because mm -hmm. the Rogue was playing defensively, yeah. then that's possible that you know, that, that might have Absolutely. been uh, leading yeah. so to the closer, But uh, I'm sure that Visual will just uh, watch the games right now and see what he did wrong. He will. And sure. he will grow for tomorrow. Like, tomorrow he might be even better than today. Super Visual. Super, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the new form. Yeah. Ah, he screams, he screams all night, and then in the morning he just has <laughs> yellow hair. <laughs> yeah. But passively. Sounds good. All right, guys. So that, that was an uh, interesting matchup. Legendarian uh, proving that he is so really good at this game and advancing to tomorrow. Uh, we, I think we have uh, one more match for you guys today. Let's see. So the, the last match for today will be Trump versus Freaky. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Got it. I got it good this time. All right. So Trump versus it Freaky like coming this. up next. <laughs> and uh, I think Freaky is in a dire position because he lost two games in a row. So he needs to win. And then again, as many players, hope for the freeway tie. And that will be his chance to advance tomorrow. Yeah. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. But... All right, so guys, stay with us. Uh, Trump versus Freaky coming up next, but now we're going into a short break. See you next. <laughs>